Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Top Stories. The son of St. Lucia's first chief minister has been appointed to serve as head of state. Minister for Health Honorable Moses Jabatis assesses the Castries Wellness Center. And the youth heed the call to participate fully in the nation's economy. The son of St. Lucia's first chief minister has been appointed to serve as acting governor general. On Thursday, 11th November 2021, His Excellency Errol Charles was sworn in during a ceremony at Government House. Details in this report. Former deputy to the Governor General, His Excellency Cyril Errol Melchiles Charles, was officially sworn in as acting Governor General at a small ceremony on Thursday. Governor General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, pursuant to Section 22, Subsection 1A of the Constitution of St. Lucia, had appointed His Excellency Charles to serve as Deputy to the Governor General for the period August 4 to 31, 2021. His Excellency Charles at the ceremony was presented with the Royal Commission by Cabinet Secretary Benjamin Emmanuel, after which he took the oath of allegiance before Her Ladyship Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. I, Cyril Errol Melchior Charles, do swear that I will faithfully bear allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Cyril Errol Melchior Charles, do swear that I will well and truly serve Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors in the office of Governor General. So help me God. The newly sworn in acting Governor General, His Excellency Charles, expressing gratitude for the confidence placed in him, pledged to serve with dignity and impartiality. Having accompanied my father at times on many of the marches and meetings that culminated in the catalytic movement, the beginning of the liberation of our, of our people from colonial rule. <clears throat> Governed by democracy, it is up to now the constitutional right of every citizen of this country to determine the country's political direction every five years. Mindful, therefore, of the enormous struggles of my forebears to take us to where we are today, I pledge to be loyal to the government and people of St. Lucia and reaffirm my services at all times with fairness and impartiality. Acting Governor General, His Excellency Cyril Errol Mel Charles Charles has had a professional career in the public service spanning some 30 years where he served in various capacities. The longest being in that of tax professional at the Inland Revenue Department for over 25 years. The Acting Governor General has also been involved in the work and the contribution of the Lions Club in St. Lucia for over 20 years. From the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Jabatiste, is continuing to assess the healthcare system as he charts the way forward for the island's health sector. Honorable Jabatiste recently visited the Castries Wellness Center for a first-hand view of the aging facility. More from Homer DeMarc. The Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs in a quest to visit all healthcare facilities around the island recently toured the Castries Wellness Center. Honorable Moses Shabatis indicated that the purpose of the tour was to gain a first-hand understanding of the operations of the facility. This, he said, will empower the government to make more informed policy decisions. For me, it's important because you hear about, about the conditions and you, you hear about um, services, but to, to come in and actually experience what our people go through is very important um, in public policy, and it's very important because I want 
these experiences to, to drive and to feed uh, what we do um, in cabinet, the decisions which we take, and also the, the bills and the policies which we, which we intend to follow. Honorable Moses Jabat has highlighted some challenges identified at the facility that serves a significant number of St. Lucians. I recognize that there are some challenges. Some, some of the spaces are, are, are really um, small and the professionals seem to you know, have to be squeezing in and out of spaces. Um, that is a concern. Also, I recognize that the the, the Cuban eye, eye clinic, the, the, the space for the Cuban eye clinic has been refurbished and um, there is some work to be done um, on, the, on the roof of this clinic. Clearly we need to do some, some cleaning. We cannot have a, a, a reputable Cuban eye clinic and, a, and a, on top of this clinic you have rotten wood and so on. We have to take care of that. And um, I'm also concerned about the waiting area. I recognize that the professionals there have set up a working area and it is important especially in COVID times but we have to do something about the conditions there. So all in all, I know that this place at one time, the thought was to have this place in transition um, with OKEU and Victoria Hospital and so on. But now we have to think about the conditions here to make things as comfortable as possible for, for our people and for the staff and the professionals. The minister indicated that the government will be working to improve the conditions of the Castries Wellness Center. From the Government Information Service, Hilma Dimak reporting. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, led by Senior Minister Honorable Stevenson King, has donated supplies to the public transport sector to assist in the fight against the coronavirus. Communications Officer Miguel Favrier has the details. The public transportation sector stands among those more severely impacted by the ravages of the coronavirus pandemic. As a result of the government of St. Lucia's COVID control and prevention protocols, minibus operators on island have for the better part of two years been operating with a smaller complement of passengers, a significant revenue shortfall being the immediate outcome. Among government's many endeavors at easing the squeeze on the transport sector, was a donation of sanitary supplies to the National Council on Public Transportation on Wednesday, November 10th. The presentation was made by Senior Minister with Responsibility for Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development and Urban Renewal, Honorable Stevenson King. The Senior Minister noted the importance of the sector to St. Lucia's social and economic development. For the last two years or so, what we have seen is a sector that has been under tremendous strain and stress, as many other sectors. But for the public transportation in particular, it is a sector that provides services to the entire country. And without that sector, without that service, probably the country can be paralyzed at any given time. And therefore, it is in our interest as a people, as a government, to ensure that while we battle with COVID-19 and we attempt to in, instill the protocols that, that have been established, that some of the champions in that regard to ensure that the protocols are maintained, sustained, really and truly, is the operators and the sector of public transportation. The senior minister touted the, quote, excellent relationship fostered between the Department of Transport and the NCOPT since he assumed responsibility for the department. To date, the department and the council have both agreed to collaborate in order to tackle numerous areas of concern in the best interests of both the community and the minibus operators for a more reliable and safe transportation system. The November 10th donation comprised 150 cases plus 200 boxes of disposable face masks 40 hand sanitizer dispensers, 64 thermometers, and 15 gallons of hand sanitizer. It seemed to be small, but it's a big initiative in that it will cover quite a bit, uh, quite a number of individuals, and certainly help in our drive, our mission of attempting to bring under control the pandemic here in St. Lucia COVID-19. I am hoping that this, in addition to other initiatives and other decisions of the government, um, will help 
continue to build and strengthen the relationship between the council and the ministry and that we can continue to engage in, in the necessary dialogue that will strengthen also the lot of minibus operators there in St. Lucia to give them a greater guarantee of their effort in the provision of public transportation. The government of St. Lucia is in the process of finalizing the fulfillment of its commitment to provide COVID relief in excess of $1 million to minibus operators. President Godfrey Ferdinand accepted the donation on behalf of the National Council on Public Transportation. It's, it looks small, but it, is, it will do great things for us. Each driver will receive 50 masks. Um, each of them, that would serve them for 50 days, which is saving them some money from buying their own masks. And that is good for, for the sector. So I want to thank the minister for his approach and method of operation since he's um, been president of, what should I say, Minister of Transport, sorry about that, Minister of Transport. He has extended a warm, open door policy to us as well as the PS, and we are grateful for that. Our discussions have been very enlightening and encouraging to know that we will be able to achieve so much, and like he he made reference to the payment, the COVID payment is soon going to be given to the, to, the, to the operators. The handover was made during a small ceremony at the conference room of the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. Reporting for the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development and Urban Renewal, I am Miguel Favre. An essay competition which challenged young St. Lucians between the ages of 15 and 30 years to make suggestions to help improve the local economic situation and build a more diversified economy has come to a successful end with a prize-giving ceremony held recently at the Office of the Ministry of Education. Chris Satney picks up that story. The essay competition, which was organized by the St. Lucian Analyzer, a group of young St. Lucians living overseas, drew participation from several young minds attempting to solve the island's economic woes through careful research and analysis with a view to presenting proposals that would help raise the standard of living of all St. Lucians. The organizers have received the commendation of Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Senator Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, for their foresight in putting the island's youth at the forefront of solving the country's fiscal issues. Our St. Lucian young men, who, as much as they live overseas, have shown an interest in the development of youth in St. Lucia. And you must be applauded for your efforts, for your writing, for your engagement with the youth. We are so very pleased. We could, I, I wish all the young men who had traveled overseas would have joined with you to engage our youth, because our youth is the future of our country. And I do not have enough words to thank you for organizing this essay competition. Participants wrote pieces of 500 to 800 words on varying topics, including the cannabis decriminalization, the retraining of the St. Lucian workforce, as well as the use of robotics amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. In the end, Lincoln Francis won the top prize of $1,000, while Chelsea Dilzak was awarded second place and $600, and Sedan Hadid received the third place and $400. Top prize winner Lincoln Francis thinks the way forward for the country in dealing with its fiscal challenges is to invest in the digitization of business and many other traditional processes. And I see COVID-19 as a really something like a I wouldn't want to use the term great recess because I know there's a lot of baggage to it, but it has it has presented the opportunity for change. And I think that we can still ride that wave as St. Lucians in changing and um, doing things differently um, in terms of education, in terms of businesses. So I really do think that um, COVID-19, as much as it has cost lives, has really presented a catalyst for change. 
the Ministry of Education facilitated the judging aspects of the competition and the presentation of prizes on behalf of the St. Lucian Analyzer. Acting Chief Education Officer Cyrus Sipal says competitions of this nature help in developing critical and analytical thinking among St. Lucian youth in becoming champions for change and for solving the problems of their generation. Not persons who will just simply um, develop a knowledge or to have content-based knowledge. I'm sure now you having participated in this um, competition, were you able to come up with that piece? I'm sure it was not just simply you go on the internet, copy and paste and put it there. You're able to critically analyze the situation and use your skills, okay, both in terms of the language and other areas to bring together a piece that now that you're being awarded. Organizers are said to be looking forward to continuing the essay competition with the rollout of a 2022 component on another challenging topic aimed at developing the youth and the country in general. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, I am Chris Satney. Reporting. The Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training has informed that kindergarten registration for the academic year 2022-2023 for schools in the Castries Basin will be available online at kregistration.education.gov.lc. Registration is open from November 10 to December 20, 2021. Dr. Claudia Lewis, the Chief Planning Officer in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training. Every year we register students, five-year-olds in schools. Um, we organize for schools in the Castries District, which uh, these include the Castries Anglican Infant, the Vidbute Primary, St. Aloysius R.C. Boys Infant, the Ave Maria Girls Infant, Camille Henry Memorial, Carmen Rene Memorial, Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist, and the Mondido Primary School. So students who were born in the year 2017, that's anywhere from January to December of 2017, and where the parents either live or work in the Castries area, and they're desirous of registering their children at these schools, we have an online portal. And that portal can be accessed at kregistration.education.gov.lc. Upon registration, all applicants will be required to select a first, second and third option in the event that their school of choice is oversubscribed. The chief planning officer indicated that the registration process has been enhanced to allow for a more seamless experience for parents and guardians. The documents include the child's birth certificate, the immunization certificate or health card with the completed three and a half year or five year development. Also, a passport size photo, or just to make it easier, you can just use a cell phone and take a snapshot of the child, a headshot, and upload that as well. If parents are using the residence criteria, we would need something to authenticate that they reside in the area. So we would need something like a utility bill on their name or if you are renting, you would need some kind of letter or lease agreement from your landlord. Mm -hmm. If you want to apply for a school place based on where you work, then you would need a job letter. Not, we don't need any financial information or what position. We just need to prove that you actually work in that area. So these are the documents. For households without internet access, alternative provisions will be made to assist parents and guardians. You can call 468-3221 or 468-5259 or WhatsApp 720-3252 for further information or assistance. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. The Water and Sewerage Company Inc. Wasco wishes to inform the public that individuals wishing to access the Customer Services Department 
can call or send a WhatsApp or text message to the numbers 4820187, and 4820060 for assistance with the following queries. Bill balances, bill queries, high consumption, new connections, reconnections, disconnections upon request, change of account holder's name and meter replacements. The service is available from Monday to Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Call or message us today to resolve all your customer service related needs. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Merci au Tarjanel. Janel. Merci, Madame. Département qui est responsable pour l'information à gouvernement de cette ici, GIS. À ce moment-là, télévision nationale, puis à NTN, car vous êtes une nouvelle à Creole. Vous êtes où? Primus Hutchinson. Ministère des Affaires touristiques, à collaboration et puis autorité touristique à cette ici, te tient une cérémonie récemment pour honorer diverses agences et groupes qui engagés en service touristique à cette ici. C'est pour tuer ce service touristique, cela, trouver un et puis l'honneur des voyages mondiaux en observation 28 l'année depuis l'année de en existence. Mais est-ce que nous pour affaires touristiques, industries, les créatifs, culture et information, honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, féliciter ces diverses portuaires services touristiques à cette ici pour ça y a accompli à service pour le développement touristique à pays là. Dr. Hiller, notre qui degré selon les salaires, a apporté bon bénéfice pour cette ici parce qu'il a offert une augmentation à la place internationale et pour les autres et fait un appel pour ces services là au prix encore plus haut qui degré y présentement. Go Grec pour l'autorité touristique cette ici, M. Thaddeus Antoine, parlait de l'importance de Grand Londres à la pour ces divers individus et compagnies qui ont pour ces services touristiques à pays là. Il expliquait aussi que l'autorité a eu un commitment pour travailler et puis il y a tout qui est engagé en développement touristique à cette ici. Ça c'est un effort pour réaliser le secteur touristique qui est durable et vaillant. Il a aussi fait comprendre que le secteur touristique, ce n'est pas pour le ministère, et les politiciens, mais pour bénéficier du pays généralement. C'est tout le monde qui est involvé dans le tourisme. Et nous avons fait le travail. Et, et nous avons continué à faire ça. Le travail tourisme Authority, c'est pour aider les gens. En parmi eux qui ont ouvert l'honneur, c'était Thrifty Car Rentals, qui plus souvent en service l'auto pour les gens qui ont loué l'auto, Marigold Bay Resort Spa et Marina. Robot Hotel, par Hotel Chocolat, Sanders Grand, St. Lucia, Barefoot Holidays, St. Lucia Limited, Spice Travels, et Tours, et Agence Voyage Going Places. C'est aussi aussi pour pour huitième fois, titre là pour la première destination à Moëz, en Caribe là. C'est aussi aussi en bataille pour titre chef pays de destination à Moëz, à la terre. Et annoncement ça là, qui fait le 26 novembre. 2021. A peu près 25 pêcheurs, hot power souffrir, ont participé à des consultations en bas conduite du ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture, à cette ci honorable Alfred Prosper, et représentatif du Parlement pour souffrir, à ce honorable Emma Hippolyte. Ou encore ça là, c'était pour essayer d'adresser ces divers problèmes qui ont affecté ces pêcheurs là et aussi tout l'autre problème qui a affecté péché généralement à cette ci Mademoiselle Hippolyte Bayer, c'est aussi là qui est un commitment pour travailler près et puis le département de la pêche pour résoudre ces situations qui a affecté péché en souffrir. Et puis, moi, je te dis comme ça, là, moi, en gouvernement, moi, je fais tout ça, moi, je pour garder qui m'a dit que adressé ces problèmes dans les gens. Alors, bien mon ami, moi, invité le ministre de l'Agricole et le ministre de la Pêche pour venir et puis pour assise, pour coûter, pour lui-même, pour tenir des oreilles. 
ce problème là, c'est ce péché à souffrir. Le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour l'affaire agricole et la pêche, honorable Alfred Prosper, remarquez qu'il a déjà discuté, et puis le ministre en cabinet de gouvernement, des grands assistants là qui les pêchaient ni brisés en cette ici. Il servit pour exemple, les pêchés perdent, et bien perdent la vie à ce la mer. La famille, bien souvent, pas ni d'air ni d'ouvrir. Et c'est pour ça que l'insurance, c'est un bagage qui est really, vraiment really important pour, pour, pour nous garder par ces pêcheurs, parce que c'est un risque que nous entendons trop pêcher, perdre la vie, pêcher qui a quitté pêche et qui n'a rien pour continuer pour rendre tous les mois en insurance, en bagage pour ça, continuer la vie. Nous savons que l'industrie est importante pour nous dans un pays, parce qu'il a apporté ma vie. Et nous savons que c'est un bagage qui est important pour la nutrition. Et actuellement, ça, ça est even plus important. Là, vous regardez ça, la manière dont le Covid a affecté le pays. So, je suis content que je suis ici, je suis tous ces belles qui affecté le pays. Et pour regarder qui est le ministre, le um, cabinet, le gouvernement saint ici, ça a été élevé, ce problème-là, qui a affecté ces pêcheurs. En An continuation, visitation pour code garde, extension des pompiers, le pays là, le ministre de la responsabilité pour ces diverses institutions de sécurité, le pays là, à ce honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, déclaré que c'est presque même plainte et qu'a trouvé un officier pompier de police. Récemment, Dr. Poyot a visité le code garde et l'extension des pompiers à Paris qui a représenté ça c'est Bamono pour être assis et puis ces officiers là pour tenir trois casements avec toutes ces situations et problèmes qui ont affecté eux. Avec ces mêmes bagages là, ils ont parlé, ils ont dit que machine n'a pas servi, puis ils ont allé, ils ont pour investiguer certains crimes, certains rapport um, il passe à la ces places là qui mauvais côté chimie mauvais mon monter grand temps avec ces places là c'est so, comment des pour une machine qui ça qui ça naviguer ces places là la primaire avec ces plus gros um, cos bagage technique concerné yo avec moi dit yo qui moi voulait wè babono police station sur so, place côté nous on deux trois um, police qui ca établi babono puis yo comprendre ces gens babono à comprendre qu'il dit Jean Babono puis au ça en bio primaire service nous pas veut toutes les ces mon neuf officiel neuf yo pas fin comprendre ces monde là so moi mentionner ça by um corporal là inspecteur qui responsable avec moi parler by commissioner associato ek merci madame ça c'est côté nous toi bout nouvelle là pour aujourd'hui mon cas monsieur autant pour ca garder mon ca boyon invitation pour je ne puis moi encore si Dieu conserve la vie, nous allons poser trois autres nouvelles à Koyol. Témoin, je souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine et comme la coutume, point toute précaution qui est nécessaire pour protéger vous avec la femme et le public de la maladie de Corona. À présent, je vais vous présenter au général. Merci, Appel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.